Outer space is becoming more and more of a target of warfare for all spacefaring nations. New technologies advance every day, tensions become more serious, and the danger of a new world war becomes more of a reality each and every day. A key aspect of understanding all of these conflicts is outer space, the next domain of warfare. Recently, space electromagnetic warfare has been the key focus to develop warfighting capabilities in outer space. Let's dive into this issue, but first, welcome to the Global Network. Please click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website to get involved. All links are in the video's description. The U.S. Space Command is looking for potential contractors to design, develop, deliver, and operate a space electromagnetic warfare facility, whose primary purpose would be to jam or destroy enemy satellite and land-based communications in time of war. This is a five-year program looking to create a facility by 2027. This facility is aimed at developing electromagnetic warfare connecting the heavens to the earth. But what is electromagnetic warfare? Electromagnetic warfare, sometimes just called electronic warfare, is a type of warfare that uses the electromagnetic spectrum. It uses all actions in the entire spectrum to intercept, analyze, manipulate, and suppress the enemy's use of the spectrum. The Congressional Research Service describes the spectrum as the electromagnetic spectrum is the range of wavelengths and frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. It includes radio waves, microwaves, visible light, x-rays, and gamma rays. Electromagnetic warfare, or EW, is manipulating the electromagnetic spectrum in order to gain and maintain military control over it, and to use it to attack enemy targets such as communication systems, control and command over enemy systems, and much more. EW is not new, and the U.S. has been using it since World War II. It's just evolved since, and is now incorporating outer space, hence Space EW. Why is this important? Just think about how many of us use wireless systems, Bluetooth, GPS, Wi-Fi, radio frequency, and more. The electromagnetic spectrum is fundamental in how the world operates in the 21st century. Now, let's add in the element of outer space. Space EW is only another layer of EW that includes outer space. Technologies and systems that already exist include use of military and civilian satellites, ground stations, which relay information between satellites in space and around the planet, a new 5G communication system for surveillance of the globe, target acquisition, which focuses on identifying targets to strike, and much, much more. Then there's the idea of an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, which is a pulse of intense electromagnetic radiation generated by an explosion. This explosion can come from a nuclear or a non-nuclear pulse. The origins of an EMP can be traced back to a test called Starfish Prime. This was a nuclear test in 1962, which is the largest nuclear test ever conducted in outer space. High above in the heavens, the US military exploded a nuclear bomb right above Johnston Island in the South Pacific, about 250 miles high. And of course, military scientists failed to predict that Starfish Prime, a nuclear explosion in outer space, would wipe out electrical systems all the way to Hawaii, which was almost 900 miles away from the detonation. The people of Hawaii had about 300 streetlights knocked out, they had damaged telephone microwave links, and many burglar alarms were going off at 11 p.m. at night. The ability to make phone calls were wiped out across many islands, along with various other electronic systems being wiped out as well. A previous deputy director of Defense Special Weapons Agency once commented on the results of Starfish Prime. 
a high altitude EMP does not distinguish between military and civilian systems. Unhardened infrastructure systems, such as commercial power grids, telecommunication networks, as we have discussed before, remain vulnerable to widespread outages and upsets due to high altitude EMP. While the DoD hardens their assets it deems vital, no comparable civilian programs exist. Thus, the detonation of one or a few high-altitude nuclear weapons could result in serious problems for the entire U.S. civil and commercial infrastructure. Along with the proposal of developing a space EW facility, the U.S. Space Command has already been equipped with its first weapon, the Counter Communication System, or CCS, also known as Metalins. This communication system is primarily made to jam enemy satellites, an electronic warfare system that can reversibly deny adversary satellite technologies. The CCS weapon may do more, but due to its secretive nature, that's all we know for now. The Space Force has declared Metal Lens to be the first offensive weapon system in the United States Space Force. The next domain of warfare includes the combination of the manipulation and superiority over the electromagnetic spectrum on the one hand and dominance of outer space on the other. The combination provides a new definition for a recipe for disaster. Both the electromagnetic spectrum and outer space should be declared a global commons in which all humanity and life depend where no one nation, military, or group dominates any of these aspects. Nature is an open source system that requires balance and shared powers, with equality as a foundation. So we ask, is it natural to dominate life? We hope you like this video on the Global Network. Be sure to share it with your friends and to check out other videos on our YouTube page. You can also visit our website again to get more involved. Until next time, peace out.